In this video, we will discuss some of the equipment that is presently available for AC coupled grid connected PV systems with batteries. Our primary reference on the topic is this article in Solar Pro Magazine. The article includes sections written by workers for various manufacturers and installers. Here is the basic diagram of an AC coupled grid connected PV system with batteries. The inverter is an ordinary inverter designed for use in grid connected systems without batteries. Under normal operation, the AC bus is connected to the grid. The PV inverter and the battery inverter charger each synchronize themselves independently to the 60 Hz waveform of the grid. Now suppose the power from the grid is lost for some reason. The battery inverter charger takes up the task of establishing the 60 Hz waveform on the AC bus, as the PV inverter is not designed to do this. Power flows from the PV array through the inverter and over the AC bus to the AC loads. Additional power for the loads, beyond what the PV array can provide, comes from the batteries through the battery inverter charger and over the AC bus. If the AC loads do not need all the power that the PV inverter can put on to the AC bus, the remainder flows through the inverter charger to the batteries. The problem is what to do when the batteries are full, so we can allow power to flow into them. But all power that flows into the AC bus has to flow back out of it. The bus has no means of storing or dissipating excess power that enters it. This problem may be quite rare, or it may be frequent. This depends on the size of the system and its use. Either way, we need a solution to have a safe system. But how complicated and expensive a solution we choose can depend on the magnitude of the problem and how often we expect it to occur. Let's look at the approaches that different companies are taking to this problem. The first two companies we'll look at, Magnum Energy and Outback Energy, are already in the business of making and selling battery inverter chargers for PV and other applications, but do not make a grid-connected inverter for PV systems without batteries. Outback Power also makes a PV charge controller that is used in many DC-coupled PV systems with batteries. Schneider Electric and SMA both make PV inverters and battery inverter chargers, so they are interested in how to pair their own products up in AC coupled systems. Because Magnum Energy and Outback Power do not make their own PV inverters, their approaches to the problem have to work with the inverters made by many manufacturers. This includes microinverters and AC modules. Also, these manufacturers cannot use data links to interact with the PV inverter. Every PV inverter manufacturer has its own communications interface. Magnum Energy approaches the problem by first taking advantage of a requirement in the IEEE standard for interconnecting distributed resources. This standard requires that a PV grid connected inverter shut down if it senses a frequency on its output side greater than 60.5 Hz. This requirement applies to all systems up to 30 kilowatts, which is the size we're interested in here. The standard requires a shutdown within 0.16 second. Underwriters Laboratory requires adherence to this standard for approval of an inverter, microinverter, or AC modules. Once a PV inverter has shut down due to too high of a frequency, it is generally designed to wait until the grid frequency is proper for 5 minutes before turning itself back on. So when the grid power is unavailable and the batteries are fully charged, the Magnum Energy Inverter Charger increases the AC bus frequency to 60.6 Hz for a short time. The increase in frequency doesn't hurt the loads, but it turns off the PV inverter from any manufacturer. The loads then derive their power from the batteries and the inverter charger can go back to 60 Hz. After 5 minutes, the batteries will no longer be fully charged. The inverter charger can then let the PV inverter turn back on or block it by again increasing the frequency to 60.6 Hz for a short time. There are two drawbacks of this approach. The first is that while the PV inverter is turned off, it is not supplying any of the power that the AC loads are using. 
we would prefer if at least most of the power for the AC loads kept coming from the PV array, even if maybe a small amount needs to come from the batteries as a precaution. The second problem is that once the PV inverter turns off, it won't turn back on for 5 minutes. We might want to get some power from it sooner. Magnum Energy's inverter charger also supports the addition of what is called a diversion load. This load takes in the extra power generated by the PV array that cannot be used by the AC loads. The power becomes heat, which may be used to heat air or water beyond what is considered necessary, or may be dissipated outside. Many diversion loads are simply space or water heaters. Hopefully, the diversion load can be switched in and out and controlled as necessary, so that the PV inverter can remain on at all times and the AC loads get as much power as they need from the PV inverter. Magnum Energy has said that they are alpha testing a diversion load device and will market it soon, but it does not presently appear on the company's website. There is much room for innovation in diversion load devices, and recently an increased demand. We should expect to see new products appearing soon. When diversion loads come out, what should we look for in them? or what should you include if you want to design your own. The first is controllability. You would like to be able to adjust it quickly so that we use as much of the power from the array as possible. We know that the power from the PV system can change quickly and the loads can also be changed when appliances turn on and off. If one of the AC loads is a refrigerator motor and it turns on, we would like the diversion load to begin drawing less power from the AC bus. Conversely, when the motor turns off, the diversion load will need to begin drawing more power. Another feature we would like is a connection for non-critical loads. If we have extra power from the PV array, even for a short period of time, maybe we can use it. Suppose we are powering an emergency shelter in cold weather. To save energy, we may have the temperature at 65 degrees Fahrenheit and only provide cold showers. If we have some extra power on a sunny day, it would be nice to raise the room temperature a little and maybe use some power for warm showers. Outback Power does not use frequency shifting to control the PV inverter. However, they do sell an inverter charger that can control a switch to disconnect the PV inverter. It can also control a switch on a diversion load. Schneider Electric makes both PV inverters and inverter chargers for batteries. They could use a digital communications link between their products to allow the inverter charger to control the PV inverter, but at present they do not. Instead, they use a higher frequency to cause their PV inverter to shut down for 5 minutes. They do not support a diversion load. SMA is the last manufacturer we will discuss. The company manufactures both PV inverters and inverter chargers. In case of a loss of grid power, the inverter charger sets the frequency of the AC bus as a means of controlling the PV inverter, as we have seen before, but it does this in a unique way. Rather than simply setting the frequency high enough to turn off the PV inverter, the inverter charger sets the frequency within a range. Depending on this frequency, the PV inverter reduces its output by some fraction. This is a graph provided by the company. It shows that the output of the PV inverter remains at 100% of what it is capable of until the AC bus reaches 1 Hz above its standard value. Then, the percentage output of the PV inverter gradually decreases with increasing bus frequency until it reaches 0 at 2 Hz above the standard bus frequency. An issue with this approach is that in the United States, the output of the PV inverter must go to 0 at 0 0.6 Hz above the standard value. The SMA system was developed in Europe where frequencies and standards are different. Using an AC bus frequency between 61 and 62 Hz to throttle down the PV inverter can only be used in the US when the system is disconnected from the grid. To deal with this, the PV inverter could know at any time whether AC bus and the grid are connected. If they are, then if the AC bus frequency reaches 60.6 Hz, either the PV inverter needs to shut down or the whole system needs to disconnect from the grid. If the system disconnects, then the battery inverter charger and the PV inverter can communicate using the frequency system shown here. 
The other option is that a US version of this system can be developed in which the PV inverter's output reaches zero at 60.6 hertz. The other issue with this approach is that it only sets the PV inverter's output as a percent of what it can put out. But what the inverter can put out may vary rapidly with cloud cover. We would like to be able to see the inverter's maximum output based on the loads. The inverter should try to hold this even in varying light conditions. In summary, we have discussed the problem in an AC coupled grid connected PV system with batteries when the system is disconnected from the grid, the batteries are full, and the PV array can produce more power than the loads are drawing. Every system needs to include a solution for safety purposes. However, how often this is a problem depends on the system. In some systems, it may occur rarely or never, and in other systems, it may occur more often. We have seen the approaches of four equipment manufacturers to this problem. With the recent increase in demand for AC coupled grid connected PV systems with batteries, it is likely that new ideas and equipment will be coming out soon. A system designer will need to consider how often the problem is likely to occur and of what magnitude, along with the technical features and costs of the different possible solutions.